What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made this beautiful, delicious, crispy skin, juicy, amazing rotisserie porchetta. Coming up! This is a pig! Well, the center part of a pig anyway. Up here would be the shoulder, then the head, over here would be the ham, then the butthole. So this is just the rib section, belly section, loin section, pretty much where all the good parts come from. It is in fact skin on and quite hefty. I wish you could pick these up at the grocery store, but I got this from my pig dealer and this pig is in fact from Peaceful Pork. Same place as Lori and Lewis gets their hogs just a few hours down the road from here. And the first thing we need to do is get rid of all this leaf lard right in the middle here. Also called kidney fat, can be a bit tricky, but usually it just peels right on out with a little bit of help. There we go, makes for great lard, very clean. While we're at it, we'll pull this old kidney out of there. Don't need that. Next thing we're gonna do is pull out the old pork tenderloin that lives right in this section right here. Take my knife, just follow the inside of the bones here. And it should peel right on out. And there we go, beautiful little pork tenderloin. Just gotta clean up that silver skin and we'll have ourselves a lovely little dinner. Well, and in here I'll go ahead and take this skirt meat out. This is the same thing that you see on the back of a rack of spare ribs because this is a rack of ribs. Out it comes, just kinda cleaning things up a little bit. So basically what we're looking at here, if you take this side angle, is a pretty recognizable pork chop. So we got the pork loin right here running all the way through. Got the belly running right here and this is the full rib cage. And typically what they're gonna do is break this in half right down the center, giving you your pork spare ribs with a little breastbone right up top, and your baby back ribs right here. And underneath that is your belly and your loin. But for porchetta, we want the pork loin and the pork belly, but we don't want any bones. So what we need to do now is the tedious task of removing all of these bones. Trying to leave on as much meat as possible. Not gonna lie, this is kinda awkward to do on camera, but once it starts peeling up, we'll just keep on going through. Just keep trimming, just keep trimming. Rib cage pretty much removed. Trying my best on this backside, but these bones are very weird shaped because they kinda curve in and down. Have I mentioned that I've never done this before? Just like that, bones removed. Not mad about having some extra bones around. Smoke these off, make ourselves a nice stock. So this is what we are left with. A nice big skin on, rib meat on, loin meat in, belly section. I'm gonna be putting this on the mini chud box. So I need to cut this thing down to be small enough to fit. Beautiful, nice looking belly right there. Nice pink loin meat right there. Honestly, this guy will probably just turn into some amazing direct heat pulled pork for another day. And because this is a heritage hog that has been air dried, the skin is already pretty tough. Unlike a skin you're gonna find on like a picnic ham from the grocery store. So rolling this one up, it's gonna be a little bit tougher than a skin on belly you guys may be able to find. But that's looking pretty awesome to me. But before I roll this up, I am gonna score it. And that way all the seasonings can penetrate in a little bit easier. And theoretically, it might make this a little easier to roll up too. You're not going too deep and definitely not going through the skin. Beautiful. Now before we go and tie in this thing up, we need to season this. So let's get our seasoning mixed together, shall we? <gasps> Starting with some fresh herbs. Some rosemary. Fresh sage. Some fresh fennel fawns. Parsley. And then into the food processor, we're going in with some garlic. Our fennel fronds, parsley, our sage, rosemary, and some freshly chopped up thyme as well. I also got the zest of three lemons and one orange going in. Oh yeah. I'm gonna get that chopped up real quick. And while that blends, we're gonna go in with some extra virgin olive oil to make this into a nice spreadable paste. Ooh. Beautiful. I'm gonna start out by going on with a nice healthy layer of some diamond crystal kosher salt. And the reason I didn't put this into the little spice paste is because I'm not really sure how much to put on there, but if I do the salt separately, I can have a really good idea, kind of visualize it. But I'm gonna go pretty heavy because there is a lot of meat here, a lot of fat. We're gonna need a lot of salt to make this thing taste real nice. Next up, 
some 16 match black pepper on sale now at shopchuds.com. Same deal with the pepper, nice even coating all the way around. I'm also gonna go on with some granulated garlic, even though there's plenty of garlic in the paste, but you know what? I love granulated garlic. Got some wonderful flavor to it. And I've also got some freshly toasted and freshly ground up fennel seed here, because those fronds don't really have the same punch that the seeds do. And then last but not least, we're gonna take our lovely little herbaceous paste here and just kind of rub it all over the place. Smells so fresh, very garlicky, very rosemary. All the flavors you really want this time of year, I tell ya. And like most things on this channel, I just kind of threw that together. Just use the discretion, how much rosemary, thyme, and sage. You know, you just kind of gotta do you on that one. Get all in there. Beautiful. And now, the moment of truth. It's time to try and roll this thing up. This thing is gonna be gigantic. Here we go. And we're just gonna try and tie this thing up as tight as we can. This might be one of the only downsides of using fresh pork, is that we can't really tighten this up on that skin. Snip the tip, and we repeat. And there we have it, folks. Beautifully tied up, looking magnificent, I must say. Came together real nice, looking nice and round. I ended up doubling on these strings just because it was fighting me a lot. Again, because the skin is very very hard, but other than that, we are looking pretty good, except for this bare side here. You know, I can't forget the sides. I've been preaching it for too long. So we're gonna throw on some of this stuff. JP, Graziano, Italian beef seasoning. Cause why not? Cause as we all know, folks, can't forget the sides. That'd be a rookie move. Into my fridge, this goes just like this, uncovered overnight, and all we need to do now is pray that I didn't make it too gigantic. <gasps> this video is brought to you by HelloFresh. It's the most wonderful time of year, folks, and with holiday parties, hosting family, travel, and shopping for gifts, it can also be the most hectic time of the year. But luckily, HelloFresh is here to help. When it comes to meal planning during busy weeknights, you can count on HelloFresh to deliver fresh ingredients and seasonal recipes right to your door. Not only are their meals quick, easy, and delicious, but they're also a great way to save some money. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping because they only give you exactly what you need for a specific meal, meaning less food waste and way less time at the grocery store. HelloFresh is also 25% less expensive than takeout. During these hectic times, I'm always looking to save some time wherever I can, and HelloFresh's quick and easy options are game changing. Like with their 20 minute meals or their easy cleanup dishes, I can spend more time enjoying the holidays and less time stressing over what's for dinner. With over 35 recipes available to choose from each week, there's something to please everyone in the family. And with HelloFresh, quality is priority, and ingredients travel from the farm to your home in less than seven days, so you know they are indeed fresh. So if you're looking for a little help with meal planning this time of year, go to HelloFresh.com and use code CHUDSBBQ18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. Again, I'll I'll have a link in the description box taking you to HelloFresh.com where you can use code CHUDSBBQ18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. Thank you HelloFresh. One day I'm gonna roll up and tie that pesky little snake in my boot. It is the next day. Well, actually it's like two or maybe even three days later. I kind of lost track of time. But anywho, it is finally time to throw this thing onto the pit. So I got some coals fired up. We're throwing this thing on the rotisserie on the mini chud box. Got my zombie apocalypse weapon ready to go. <gasps> Let's head to the pit. And through we go. Going on with hook number one. And now we try and slide this big boy right on in. Not much to it. Make sure to tighten this so it doesn't move around. And then we'll add spike number two. And there we go, looking good to me. I'm gonna start these coals kind of indirect on the back side of this pit. That way we're creating more of an oven and uh, avoiding that initial direct heat on the skin. Just as a precaution so we don't get the skin too crispy before the inside is cooked. But of course, as this cook goes on, we'll keep an eye on it and probably start blasting the skin a little later on down the road. But for now, I'm gonna rock this pit probably around 250, 300 degrees for a long time. We're about two, three hours into this cook and so far so good. This thing is looking great, still spinning. Skin is looking nice, maintaining temps really well. Strings holding up. One thing I have noticed as this thing shrinks up and rotates, these hooks are kind of loosening up and trying to push out. So I've had to come in and reinsert them a few different times. So definitely keeping a close eye on this thing. But uh, other than that, we're just gonna let it keep on rolling for the next few hours. We are about five, six hours into this poor cat of cook. We've hit the fat rendering stage, meaning there's a lot of smoke, but this thing is looking good. I did have to mess with the old rotisserie a couple of different times as this thing shrunk up, but it has stayed together. Nothing horrible has happened yet. But at this point, what I just did is moved all the coals directly under this thing to try and blast this skin for the last little part of this cook to get it nice and crispy. Internal temp at this point is right around 150 degrees, 160 in some parts. And I'm gonna cook this thing pretty far because I wouldn't 
usually do that for a tenderloin, but I'd rather have a dry tenderloin than unrendered pork belly fat. So we're just gonna keep smoking away and pray that we don't have a grease fire. But we'll check back in in a little bit. And just like that, after about an hour of trying to crisp up this skin, I'm gonna call this thing done. We're getting some of the puffage I was looking for, but this thing has cooked through. It's shrunken up quite a bit. So off it comes. How to go about this? Ah, I got an idea. Beautiful. All right, folks, and there it is in all its glory. After it came off the old mini chud box, I popped it under the broiler for a little bit, literally like 18 seconds, did not take long, just to try and get some more of those micro blisters on top. In all honesty, it's not as pretty as I was hoping it was gonna be, but at the end of the day, this is my first time ever doing this, and it does look more like a barbecue porchetta than a traditional one, which I think is fitting for this channel. But anywho, Skin is nice and crispy. Definitely rendered a lot of fat out. You can tell this thing shrunk up a lot. These strings are actually loose at this point, which is kind of cool. And I did do a little brief experiment with some really hot oil to see if I could puff the skin up that way, and that did not work. So I think maybe next time I do this, I'll probably just start throwing coals underneath the skin sooner in the cook, or maybe start with it to really get that crispy puff going and then let it finish off indirect. I don't know. That's why we experiment. But also, I'm not entirely convinced that the rotisserie is the best way to go about cooking something like this. I'm just glad it didn't fall into the fire. After letting this crispy little porchetta rest for about 15, 20 minutes, I think it's time to slice on in and see how it is looking. Oh, cut through that skin real nice. Looking nice and juicy. Nice little morsel, crispy skin. We're gonna do a little sneak peek. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Mm. Wow, I couldn't resist. Oh, it's so good. Mm. It's just juicy pork belly with crispy skin on it, but it's got all these wonderful garlicky flavors. All right, let's keep slicing. Ooh, that is awesome. It's a nice slice, held together too. Ah, oh, beautiful. I mean, honestly, what's not to like here, folks? You got some garlic and some herbs, super juicy pork belly, crispy skin. Mm, so good, I'm ready. I think this piece is looking good. A little bit of everything. Got that crispy skin, juicy belly. Ow. Mm, that is phenomenal. Oh, crispy skin never gets old, folks. Mm -hmm. Quite the presentation too, you know? Forget your turkey, man. Show up to a Christmas or Thanksgiving meal with one of these bad Larrys. Whew, showstopper, for sure. It's got that direct heat flavor. It's super herby, super garlicky. Could have gone a little heavier on the salt, but luckily that's pretty easy to add in post here, so. I'd much rather under season this than over season it, because if this was too salty, there's really not much we could do about it. Go for some of this loin meat from the middle. Mm. Even for being cooked upward of 175, that is delicious. Turns out if you want to take a lean cut like a pork loin and make it good, just uh, wrap it in a bunch of fat. Damn, that is good. You know, I was kind of complaining about this skin, but it's eating well, tastes great, and uh, nothing wrong with that, folks. Oh, it's so good. Definitely a bit of a labor of love on this one. And the best part is, tomorrow I get to make porchetta sandwiches with this juicy, succulent meat. Y'all been requesting a porchetta video for a very long time, and like I said, this is really the first time I've ever done this. Next time, I think I'll probably try and find a hog that hasn't been air dried nearly as long. You know, I thought the dried skin would really help out in the crispy process, and you know, it is crispy. But I think if I had one with softer skin like you'd find on a picnic roast or something, it'd be a lot easier to tie up. And then I could treat it like I do with every other pork skin video, or you know, you could blast it with some holes, maybe salt it overnight, that kind of thing. But oh, that was an end piece. So flavorful. <clears throat> all in all, I'd call this a success. You know, we got some nice rendered fat, nice juicy meat, flavor was right on point, crispy skin, it didn't fall into the fire, and I got to break down a pig. I haven't done that in a very long time, and clearly I need a little bit of work on this particular cut, but uh, porchetta, pretty fun thing to do. Highly recommend it. But without further ado, I think it's time for the official taste test. <laughs> All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to make an absolutely fantastic crispy skin rotisserie style porchetta on the old mini chud box. I highly recommend giving this one a try. And if you can't find that exact cut that I used, you can always just roll up a skin on pork belly or wrap a pork belly around a pork loin. There are many ways to go about doing it. And I highly recommend you give it a try very soon. But that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.